All right, hi everybody. In this video, we're gonna go over the answers to the energy equation practice. So uh, to start stuff off, we got a 70 kilogram skier starts at rest on top of a 20 meter tall hill. Uh, some energy is lost to friction and air resistance on the way down. At the bottom, the skier is going 15 meters per second. How much energy was lost due to friction and air resistance combined? So uh, first thing, right, for each of these, you were supposed to draw a force or an energy diagram. So let's start things off by doing that. Um, so first thing is to start to ask, well, like, think about what should we include in the system? And we really probably only want to include the skier on this one. So uh, let's get that. We got the skier. And that's pretty much the only thing that we're going to have in the system there. Next thing to start out the beginning. So the beginning situation is, is when they're on the top of the hill. Uh, and so we need to think about like, well, what types of energy do they have? So do they have kinetic energy? Well, it says uh, that they start at rest. So uh, no. Do they have gravitational energy? Well, yeah, you're on top of a hill there. And do you have elastic energy? Uh, no, there's no springs involved anywhere in this whole situation. So there we go with some gravitational energy. Um, at the end, so then we need to think about like, is there any energy added or subtracted? Well, there is some energy that is subtracted, right? Because uh, the problem does say that we're losing some energy uh, to friction and air resistance, right? So, uh, so there we go. That's our one bar of energy gone there. Uh, do we have any kinetic energy? Yes, right? It says we're going 15 meters per second at the bottom. So we are moving. Uh, we wouldn't have any gravitational energy because now you're at the bottom of the hill and still no spring involved in this situation. So uh, we just have the kinetic energy there. So now to use it to write our equation, uh, that's going to give us gravitational energy minus the work due to friction um, is going to be equal to the kinetic energy. So now to plug in some of the information, uh, gravitational energy is minus mgh minus our w, and then kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So uh, let's see here, we got a 70 kilogram skier, uh, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8, and the height is 20 meters. W is what we're looking for. That's the amount of energy that's lost due to um, friction and air resistance. One half 70, and it says we're going 15 meters per second. So there we go. Um, do a little calculation here. We got 70 times by 9.8 times by 20. That's going to give us. 13720 minus W is equal to 0.5 times by 70 times by 15 squared is 7,008. Okay, cool. So you can see we've lost some energy, right? We started out with basically 13,000 joules, almost 14,000 joules. We're down to a little under 8,000 joules. So we've, we've lost some energy during that process. Uh, so now to start for W, uh, basically, what I would do is I'd add the W to the other side. So, and then I would subtract um, the 7,000 over to this side and add the W to that side. And that's going to give us, right? 5,845 joules is equal to W. And that's how much energy we've lost. So, cool. Let's move on to number two. Number two says a uh, 0 0.03 kilogram metal dart is fired straight up out of a spring-loaded dart gun. The spring has a spring constant of 600 newtons per meter, and the spring is compressed seven centimeters right, which we're going to need to change two meters. The dart uh, sticks into a piece of wood that is two meters above the dart gun. How much energy was dissipated into the block as the dart hits the block? Okay, so let's start ourselves off here. Uh, initial, so we're going to have the dart gun in the system and the dart in the system. Uh, initially, we're going to start things off with some elastic energy here from the dart gun, right? Dart gun's not, dart and dart gun are not moving, dart and dart gun are not up high, so neither of those two. Um, at the end, we have, um, at the end, we have gravitational energy, or sorry, 
We don't have kinetic energy because it's not moving. It's stuck in the in the block, right? We do have gravitational energy because it's up high. Uh, no elastic or no elastic energy because the spring is not um, hit. So the question is, well, where did some of that energy go, right? So if we think about it, let's say it starts. Let's say it starts here with the dart gun. Uh, here's my block of wood. Now, had I, you know, let's say I just shot the dart gun and, and the dart went up, right? And let's say it would go all the way up to up here. So if I put the block right here, right, it's going to embed itself into the block. So it, it doesn't, it still has, you know, it doesn't have, it's not all gravitational energy because all gravitational energy would be when it's all the way up here, right? So it's got gravitational energy and then it's, it's lost some, right? It's lost some energy, um, some, you know, to, to hitting that thing, to hitting the block there. So what we're going to do is we'll deal with that just by like having, we'll just say two block, right? So that block absorbs some of that kinetic energy that the, that the dart had at that point. So uh, we have our, so that would give us, the equation would be elastic energy minus the work to the block is going to give us the gravitational energy we are looking for how much energy is dissipated. So we're looking for the W there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and change the elastic energy equal to 1 half kx squared minus the W equals mgh. Uh, K is 600. X is 7 centimeters. So that's 0 0.07 meters. So we got to make sure we switch that. And we got eight height. It's two meters, right? So now point five times by six hundred times by point zero seven squared tells us that we start with one point four seven joules of energy and 0 0.03 times by 9.8 times by 2 says that we end with 0 0.588 joules of energy. So we start with 1.47, we end with only 0.588. So the question is, how much did we lose? Uh, very similar to the last problem. Uh, let's see here. We got our 7 minus the 0 0.588 is equal to the W. Just I moved the W right over to that side. So, and then I subtracted the 0 0.588 over to the other side. And that's going to give you W is equal to 0 0.882 joules. So that's how much, that's how much energy the block must have absorbed um, when the, when the dart hit it. So uh, B, how fast was the dart going before it hit the block? Now there's a couple ways to do this one and it doesn't necessarily require you to um, do a, an energy bar diagram. So if you didn't do an energy bar diagram for this one, that's okay. Um, but the initial situation is not different, right? It's the same. So uh, we still start out with that. We're still gonna put the dart gun in the dart in the system. And uh, right, the dart is still basically two meters up, so that's not different. The difference is that because the dart hasn't hit the dart gun anymore, that energy is still kinetic energy. So our energy bar graph would look something like that. Now, um, so a thing to kind of recall is that, so basically what's happened is these two, um, right, those two, bars of energy have basically moved to be here now. And, um, and so keep in mind that that represents, you know, basically 0 0.88 joules of energy. So when we go down here, I mean, we can recalculate basically all of this. If we want to, we could say, oh, elastic energy is equal to uh, the kinetic energy. Um, plus the gravitational energy, but I don't actually need to like go ahead and recalculate all this. I know that we start with 1.47 joules of energy. Um, and so our kinetic energy, we got one half 
mv squared plus 0 0.588. And that gets, of course, the 0.588 is going to get subtracted to the other side. So it's going to give me 0 0.882 joules of energy equals 1 half mv squared. And this isn't a surprise me necessarily like, oh, look, uh, the kinetic energy 1 half mv squared is equal to the 0.882. Um, and that's just because the work, I mean, what did, what did the block take up here in part A? The block took all of the kinetic energy, right? So the kinetic energy that we have right before it hits the block, the block takes that and um, that's how much energy, um, you know, that's where the, that all the kinetic energy is transferred to the block. So that's why this 0 0.882 is turning up again. Um, but anyway, just to basically finish solving this, you just now go one half. So some of you that are maybe, you know, kind of tuned in might have might have been able to start right here. And that would have been OK um, if you had if you had seen that. So ahead of time. So you wouldn't have necessarily had to start all at the beginning with the with the, the energy bar graph. So uh, to finish solving that, we're going to uh, 0 0.882 uh, times, let's see here, divided by 0.882, divided by 1 half times by 0 0.03. Uh, I'm going to make sure I use parentheses on that, but that's going to give me 58.8 equals V squared, square root both sides. I'm going to get that V is equal to 7.67. So 7.67 meters per second. So there we go. Last one. Uh, we have a, a family is driving their 1300 kilogram minivan, which st uh, stalls on the way to Disneyland in order to salvage some of the magical day where they wait in lines and find out that Mickey Mouse is really just someone named John in a costume. The dad, also the one that forgot to put gas in the minivan, takes the children, uh, makes the children get out in the super hot sun and push the van down a slight hill to the gas station. The children are start the, when the children start pushing, the van is 0.4 meters high, higher than the gas station. So that tells us it's going to have a little bit of, uh, gravitational energy. The children strain their tiny little child muscles, pushing the heavy van, ultimately adding 2,900 and, or sorry, 2,494 joules of their own meager supply of energy. How fast is the van going when it reaches the gas station? So uh, let's think here. When they start out, uh, the van is, is right. It's out of gas, so it's not moving. Uh, no, no springs anywhere in this whole situation. So, so it's got some, some gravitational energy here. Um, let's put the, the van in the system there. Uh, the children, they're adding their own energy here, right? So they're adding some energy. We'll just say from children. And uh, it doesn't say anything about friction. So let's assume that uh, no friction. And all of that turns into kinetic energy at the end, right? When they reach the gas station. So to write the equation for that is just going to be gravitational energy plus the work from the children uh, is equal to the kinetic energy. So MGH plus work from the children is equal to one half MV squared. Fill out the things that we know here. So uh, the mass of the van is what? 1300 kilograms, so 1300 kilograms times by 9.8 times by, what did I say, 0 0.4 meters. Uh, plus, uh, we know that the children add 2,494 So let's go ahead and do some calculations. So we add those together, 5,096 plus the amount of energy. So that's how much gravitational energy the van has plus the amount of energy that the children added. Um, 
Oh goodness gracious, I did times, not plus. Let's see here, plus. So that gives us 7,590. Six, five, zero, divide by 650. Um, and that's going to give us 11,068, or not 11,000, 11.68, sorry, equals V squared, then square root, square root, and uh, you're going to get that V is equal to... Mm, 3.4 meters per second. And there you go. That's uh, how to do these problems. So as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. But uh, thank you very much for watching.